Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles and today I've got another double action replay for you. One game, two perspectives. However, before we start I should warn you that you may be able to hear a sort of strange noise in the background. Uh, unfortunately you're just going to have to put up with it and that's my air conditioning. I love you all but it's bloody hot here and I ain't turning the air conditioning off for anybody. This is Creepcraft69 in the T-54 lightweight. That over there is one of his platoon mates, Overlord49 in the WZ-132. And this is T-1902T, also in a T-54 lightweight. You're going to be seeing today's battle from two perspectives, that of Creepcraft69 and T-19, both in the T-54 lightweight. I don't have Overlord49's replay, but, well, he didn't have a particularly good game. Creepcraft and T-19, both playing the T-54 lightweight Soviet Tier 8 light tank, but they both play it very, very differently. Creepcraft is a little more cautious, whereas T-19... O2T is a hell of a lot more aggressive. And he's going to get most of the early action in this game. First tank that they spot, that they actually have a chance at shooting at, is an enemy M41 Walker Bulldog Grand Final version. And this guy is basically going to get one shot off and then die. He is far too far forward and there are far too many tanks rushing him. You can see that T19 likes to get stuck in. Whereas Creepcraft, he's a bit more cautious. He hangs back, he waits for the shot, and he gets the first kill of the match. One Walker Bulldog down. Now, T-19 may be aggressive, but he's not bloody stupid. He only goes for it when he knows he's going to win. Takes a shot at the IS-2, but he doesn't sit still aiming at him. Dodges the IS-2's return fire, gets himself into concealment behind this ridge with the rest of his platoon. Starts looking for the opportunities. Risks another shot at the IS-2, doesn't hang around waiting to aim, pulls back, IS-2 misses, and now he knows he can commit himself. The IS-2 is on the retreat, they sense that they've got the enemy team on the back foot, so they all push round, starting to be a lot more aggressive with his T-54E1. IS-2 doesn't appear to know whether they're attacking or retreating, he's still falling back, T-54E1. Scores a hit, does some damage, but the T-54E1 gets a very, very nasty hit in, in return damages his ammo rack and injures his gunner. So now he's had to burn his repair kit and his first aid kit and he decides to just cool it for a while and Creepcraft takes over the attack. Switching back to Creepcraft's perspective, he's waiting for that T-54E1 to get finished off by the AMX-5120 and as soon as that happens he takes the bull by the horns and he goes straight over the ridge and the whole team basically rush this poor IS-2 who has basically no chance. Now T-19 has been badly beaten up but he's not just sitting at the back. There's being cautious, and then there's camping. And he's being cautious, but he's still looking for opportunities to get some damage done. So the second the IS-2 gets taken down, he guns the engine and charges up to get him a better shooting position on this T-29. Again, you can see the difference in their two play styles. Creepcraft is here. He's looking for the targets that he can hit quite safely from concealment. He's playing it. He's playing the odds. He's working the numbers. T-19, on the other hand, he's having none of that. As soon as the IS-2 is dispatched, he charges forward looking for a position where you can get the flanking shots on these enemy heavies and anything else that might happen to be around there. He finds himself a spot of concealment and from here he's got far better shots of the hull of that T-29. And I'm pretty sure he's about to get his first kill. T-29's got nowhere to go. Unfortunately, he has been spotted by that IS-3 and he takes yet another hit. Pops off for a turn shot which only does critical damage and then gets this thing mobile again. And while T-19 is scrambling to avoid a second hit from the IS-3, which would kill him, Creepcraft is not being idle. He's sitting here in concealment, pumping shot after shot into the IS-3, who does eventually go down. And the second that happens, pretty much all three of the platoon members spot a nice big fat juicy T-28 prototype. But once again, thanks to his riskier but more aggressive positioning, it's T-19 who has the best shots at the T-28 prototype. But even Overlord 49 is getting stuck in there in the WZ-132. And with the T-28 prototype dispatch, that's the eastern end of the map completely under the team's control and the scores are 8 kills to 4. And it's at this point where everything starts to go just a tiny little bit pear-shaped. t 19 is still going for it, but he's not going to be taking any more chances from here on in. Of course, that doesn't mean he's not going to try to push the envelope and get as far up as possible and get some good spots on these guys. Unfortunately, Overlord 49 bites off a little bit more than he can handle. 
and he gets deleted by an ISU-152 with the troll cannon. Still, at least he spotted the ISU's position. At least the team are now warned that pushing that ridge line is likely to be very, very dangerous to their health, but the team have just lost three tanks in the space of a couple of seconds, and the scores are now 9-7. Forewarned that there's an ISU over there, T-19 decides screw that, and starts displaying a little bit of caution for once, and decides to work his way around the flank. Try and flush that ISU out, see if he can get him from the side. And, oh, there he is. For the first time this game, he actually stops to aim. He's going for the tracking shot so he can pick this guy apart at his leisure. Unfortunately, the shot goes high and to the left. So he does some damage to the ISU, so he doesn't pin him into position, and the ISU is able to pull back and get into cover. It's at this point where T-19, surprise, surprise, decides to try something a little risky and goes for a spotting run, hoping to be able to finish off that ISU and also spot the other enemy tanks that are clustered around the cap circle. And there's the ST-1. And he has been spotted. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Handbrake turn. And he's thinking about going for it again, but I think sanity prevails at this point. I mean... <laughs> T-19-02-T. I think you've pushed your luck quite enough for one day. So he decides to beat a hasty retreat. Or does he? Unfortunately, they've just lost another tank, the scores are now even, and those spots aren't going to last forever. In fact, any second now, they've now lost sight of everybody in the cap circle, and the enemy team are capping, so... Ah, eh, screw it. Chicks dig scars and glory lasts forever. He decides to do a hero spotting run. And he's been spotted. And there they are. He's definitely not going to be stopping this time. <laughs> there you go. Job done. Fires on the move, doesn't hit anything, but hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And he's managed to break contact and light up everybody in the cap circle. So, job done. He's going to take a break now, right? Yeah, wrong. <laughs> he's going back for more. Despite the hero spotting run, nobody appears to have been able to actually hit anything in the cap circle. And they're not in immediate danger from losing the cap. This is encounter after all, but, well... Somebody's got to shoot them. There you go. Cap reset. Scores are 10-10. And I'm pretty sure that they're not going to fall for that trick twice. So, what's Creepcraft been up to while T-19's been earning his Duty Hero badge? Let's take a look and find out. At more or less the same time that T-19's doing his Hero Scouting run, Creepcraft spots a T-54 who's just about to finish off the AMX-5120 that was given them such good support against that T-54E1 at the beginning of the match. Rather than rush off and take on the T-54 alone, he decides to back up his teammate here against an enemy Tiger-1 who's caught in the middle of the village. This is the first hit he's taken from anything in this game, and it's the only hit he's going to take from that Tiger-1. Watch this. Tiger-1 gets the turret around, and he manages to hit just about the only place from the side that a shot from an 88mm gun is going to bounce on a T-54 lightweight the front of the turret. The, the Tiger's gun depression is not that bad. That was just a badly aimed shot. He's panicking now, of course, and he's dead. So, notice what Creepcraft did there. He had a choice of two targets, and he went for the one that he was going to have backup and support dealing with, rather than rushing off into the woods alone against the T-54. He might have won that fight, but he was never going to lose the fight against the Tiger. Still, that T-54 is annoying. We're going to have to deal with it. There's a very shallow ridge line running across the middle of the open field over there, and the T-54 is on the other side of it. So Creepcraft is taking advantage of that to approach this guy undetected. And that's when T-19 runs into a potential spot of bother. It's the Walker Bulldog. T-19 does love running off without any support, and he's on perilously low health, but he's hunting that Walker Bulldog, and he's confident that he can kill him. Up ahead, trees falling. There he is. T-19 gets the first shot off, and it's exactly now that Creepcraft is turning around, attempting to save his platoon mate. But he misses, and, well, T-19 doesn't really need the help. So with the Walker Bulldog taken care of, and T-19 no longer in immediate danger, Creepcraft can get back to that T-54. Amazingly, this T-54 still has no idea that Creepcraft is here. And he has the health advantage, and he gets the first shot off. 
and now it's hard to see how he's going to lose this fight, but the T-54 can still do a substantial amount of damage to him in one hit. Creepcraft scores another, but he can do without taking another 320 damage from this guy, and that's when the T-54 makes the mistake. But he's not going to hang around to celebrate because there's an ST-1 and a Tiger-2 both lining up shots at him. He takes a shot at the Tiger-2 on the move, it bounces. T-19, however, has the flank. After polishing off the Walker Bulldog, T-19 is attempting to help that friendly IS and keep him in the game. But there's an ST-1 and a Tiger-2 rushing this guy, and, well, no chance. But from here he does have juicy flanking shots at both of these enemy heavies if he can just get a clear line of fire. Tiger-2 stops to aim at Creepcraft and the shot bounces. Despite now being aware that he's taking shots from the flank, he continues to try to chase down Creepcraft, and T-19 sets him on fire, just before they both pop out of line of sight. Now we didn't get any message pop up that the Tiger 2 was dead. He is in fact still alive, he managed to get the fire extinguisher off just in time. But he's now sitting on exactly three health. And for pretty much the first time since the start of this match, everything goes quiet. It's two versus two, a pair of T-54 lightweights versus a pair of heavy tanks. One badly damaged, but one still with most of his health. Oh, there's the Tiger 2. Three health. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Give us a clear shot. Nope. He's gone. Now that ST-1 is going to be problematic. It's a tier 9 Soviet heavy tank, and it is exceptionally heavily armoured. First, of course, we're going to have to find them. And the last thing you want to do is be approaching them from the direction where you were last spotted. They're still going to have, if they've enabled enhanced minimap features, and they should, they're still going to have your last reported position, so they're likely to have their guns pointing in this direction. And I think T-19's had enough of being aggressive for one day. <laughs> he doesn't want to take any more chances, so he takes the scenic route around. So what do these two guys have going for them? Well, they're in tier 8 light tanks, so they're going to have the speed, they're going to have the mobility. They're also going to have very good view range, and more importantly, they're going to have very good camo rating compared to a pair of heavy tanks. And because they're light tanks, they're going to keep that camo rating while they're moving. So, if they're smart, they should always be able to get the first shots off against these two heavies. And I have no reason to believe that these two guys aren't smart, based on the way that they've played so far. While T-19 is repositioning, Creepcraft does a bit of active spotting, cresting ridge lines and trying to get direct line of sight and pin down the location of these two enemy heavy tanks. They're not in the cap circle, the cap counter isn't going off. And they don't appear to still be in the town in the centre of the field. So one of two things is likely to have happened to you. Either those two enemy heavies have pulled back to the western end of the cap circle, in ambush positions waiting to kill these two tier 8 lights if they attempt to cap. Or they've pushed further east across the field, in which case T-19 could be about to run into a lot of trouble. And so Creepcraft heads east in order to back up his teammate. But they would have seen them by now if that were the case, and then the cap counter starts going off. So it looks like they probably did initially try to pull back and set up ambush positions overlooking the cap circle, but when nobody was taking the bait, they got tired of waiting. And now both of them are sitting in that cap circle. So Creepcraft and T-1902T now know exactly where the Type 2 and the ST-1 are, and they can plan accordingly. So here's what they're going to do. Not a particularly complex plan. They're basically going to come at them from two sides. Creepcraft has loaded high explosive in anticipation of getting a shot off at the Tiger 2 first. The Tiger 2 only has three health. High explosive will kill it. Meanwhile, T-19 is working his way along to the cap circle from the other side, but he's not just driving straight across the middle of the open field. He knows exactly where both of those enemy heavies are, and he's using the ridge on his left to get right up to the corner of the cap circle without being seen. And that's where he stops. You'll notice he also has high explosive loaded for killing that Tiger 2 but he's not the one who's going to be poking the corner. He pops his nose out, he will be seen. Creepcraft, on the other hand, has a much, much better chance of spotting these guys without being detected. So, back to Creepcraft as he makes his approach. Now he's using all the low ground and concealment that he possibly can to get as close to that cap circle as possible and spot these two heavy tanks before they see him. Unfortunately, there isn't an awful lot of concealment on that ridge line just up ahead, and when he crests the ridge here, they're probably going to see him. 
But there's the Tiger II. Creepcraft is spotted, which means that the Tiger II and the ST-1 both turn their guns around to point at Creepcraft, and that's all the invitation that T-19 needs. Pops out around the corner, high explosive loaded, and headshots the Tiger II. And from this point on, as long as they're smart, there's no way that they can lose against the ST-1, unless the ST-1 charges down T-19, which is probably the only chance he's got, because what they're going to do now is they're basically going to tag team him. Now, the ST-1 is trying to take cover behind the wreck of that ISU. Doesn't matter which way he turns, as long as he sits there, he's always going to have a T-54 lightweight shooting into his flank or his rear. He turns to face one, that gives the other one shot at him. There's no way they can lose. The ST-1's only chance was as soon as that Tiger II got taken out, he had to charge down T-19 and attempt to kill him so that he could then turn around and deal with Creepcraft in a 1-on-1, -on -one. but he didn't. He sat behind the wreck of the ISU, even when it became pretty clear that it just wasn't providing cover from Creepcraft's gun, and that pretty much sealed his fate. At no point during this engagement have Creepcraft or T-19 ever been in danger of taking a hit from that ST-1, and the ST-1 can just sit there and take shot after shot after shot. Very nicely done, guys. Battle results? Pretty impressive. It's actually a double ace. They both managed to get Ace Tanker, both Creepcraft 69 and T1902. Ace Tanker and the T54 Lightweight. And as for the damage, between the two they managed to do over 7,000 damage to the enemy team, which isn't bad for a tier 8 light tank. Although, well, to be honest, there's nothing really light about the T54 Lightweight. It's actually a better tier 8 medium tank than the T44, and the T44 is a tier 8 medium tank. But that's definitely not taking anything away from the teamwork that these two guys displayed in the course of this match. Very well played, both of you. Thank you for sending your replays in. And to everybody else, I hope you enjoyed today's double action replay. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.